Okay, Liz. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, always, always Zoom challenges, right? Oh my God. It's like the whole world has gotten on Zoom in the last two weeks and nobody even like asked me if I was okay with it. <laughs> you know, at least somebody's doing okay during the shutdown. <laughs> wow. So, but thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Of course. It's so nice to be able to put a face to the name. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for having all of those great data points when I throw 10 million questions at you. <laughs> we're, we're happy to help. So anytime. Good. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Cool. Well, um, so Liz Paquette, it, did I say Paquette correctly? Yeah. Great. Is a uh, head of consumer insights at Drizzly, the um, e-commerce FebAlk platform, I guess is the quickest way I could put it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm super curious about what you guys have been seeing over the last couple of weeks in terms of trends, Bevel ordering. Um, you know, I know in normal times, you guys are usually a leading indicator of what's about to kind of what we're going to see generally in the market. Um, you know, I'm not sure if that's exactly true right now as well. <laughs> well, I guess we'll see. But, um, you know, to that end, I wanted to ask what you guys have been seeing especially in this last week um, in terms of about trends, sales, you know, growth rates for beer and wine and spirits, because I know a few weeks ago we chatted and you guys, like you were the leading indicator then, you know, you were saying that beer was up double digits, but wine and spirits were up even more than that. And then we saw that play out in the scan data. So, um, you know, we've reported some of the scan data the last few weeks, you know, there's a little bit of a lag uh, to March 15th, up double digits in the off premise last or to March 22nd, up even more. What are you guys seeing, especially last week? Are we yeah. decelerating or are we continuing to grow? Yeah, so it's it's super fascinating. When we first started to notice a discernible impact was around the week of March 9th. Mm -hmm. um, and what we saw from that week to the week after was just a total explosion even beyond that first week. Um, so when we look now at this past week, week of 323, compared to that week of 316, we're not seeing as big of a jump. However, we still are seeing growth. So I think what happened in that first week was, you know, everyone started to, as you talked about, you know, first turn more to off-prem as some of the on-prem locations were starting to shut down. And then what followed from that was the greater shift to e-com even as some of those stores started to only be offering delivery and pickup options. Um, so I think we saw that initial jump, um, but now we're, what we're seeing is that that is not only just maintaining, uh, but it is growing. So if we look at our numbers last week specifically, on average, we were up about 500% year over year. Um, week prior to that, on average, it was about 400. So, um, and when we look at our baseline, how, how we think about baseline growth for Drizzly is that we've been comparing primarily to earlier this year in 2020, because that's really the best indicator for kind of what we would have expected to see at this point in time. So when we look at those baseline numbers, we're seeing kind of similar things happen there as we're seeing year over year. Um, so kind of similar level of growth last year versus this year, or sorry, last week versus this week, um, but, but a little bit of a growth. Um, and what's really interesting is if we think about this week in particular compared to our baseline, um, basically how we set that baseline up was that it's eight weeks prior to date. So eight weeks prior to this past week was actually Super Bowl Sunday. Okay. So when we actually look at this past Sunday in particular compared to eight weeks prior, we're still up about 150% over baseline. Mm -hmm. So that's 150% higher growth than we would have expected um, even compared to Super Bowl Sunday, which is one of the biggest days of the year always. Mm -hmm. um, so again, kind of headline for what we're seeing now is a little bit of a leveling out but it's still explosive growth compared to what we would have expected to see at this point in time. So you think maybe between, you know, last week and going into this week, it might start to slow a little bit more and then plateau, or do you guys have any predictions for how it might play out over the next few weeks? I mean, with everything, all signs for us is are pointing currently still to continued growth 
even though there has been a little bit of that slowing, that's really just in relation to that first week where everything really took off. Right. So it's not that I think we're seeing kind of this, this lull starting to happen. We are still seeing continued growth. It's just a little bit at a slower um, pace, just given kind of the nature of what's going on now. I think everybody's hunkered down and in. Um, and now, our, you know, particularly too, what we're seeing is just even more chatter on social, like our, our mentions on social are up some like something like 1000%. Um, so this has been really an organic movement too. Um, and we are seeing that continuing to accelerate. So we don't see this kind of slowing down per se. It's more so just beyond that, like initial kickoff. It's kind of, you know, tempered down a little bit. Gotcha. Um, has your base of both consumers and retail partners expanded a bunch since, you know, the last couple of weeks and everybody's now needing delivery of, you know, Bevelk? Yeah. Yeah. So typically new buyers on Drizzly account for about 15% of sales. Um, this last week in particular, on average, we were seeing that number up about a thousand percent and making up about, I think it was about 40% of total share of buyers. So new buyers are actually driving a very large percentage, which means more people are discovering alcohol e-commerce and delivery as an option. Um, from a retailer perspective, kind of a similar story. Um, you know, we know that that our platform and this this offering at this point in time, like many consumers, are turning to delivery as a safer alternative. Uh, and at a time where many businesses are having to close their doors um, and are struggling, we know that this does provide an, an option for our retail partners to kind of continue to provide that value to their customers in a safer way. Um, so even leads from, you know, a partner perspective are up something like 300 to 400%. So our team is working double time to try to bring folks on as quickly as they can um, to not only help those businesses out, uh, but also meet the demand that we're seeing in those markets too. Gotcha. And for new users, both, you know, consumers and retailers, do they differ significantly from your, I guess, regular base? And if so, you know, in what way? We actually aren't seeing huge differences in terms of like demographics of, of the people that are using Drizzly. There have been very slight shifts in age, but you know, we typically primarily serve our biggest audiences is millennials in primarily urban areas. Um, you know, that's by nature, of course, part of where we operate. Yep. Um, but, you know, have seen a little bit of diversification in terms of that age number and, um, you know, definitely some older folks on the platform We've gotten some really nice anecdotes um, from some of our customers writing in, you know, a few, few folks that are over a hundred that were staying. Oh my God, seriously? Yeah, that's <laughs> really, really nice um, to be able to hear some of those stories too. Wow, that is cool. You guys are near national now, right? I mean, you're in every state, but maybe not every city, right? So we're not we're not yet in every state. We're okay. in um, it's just over thirty states, okay. um, and and one province in in Canada. So you know, pretty much at wherever we can legally operate today, we are, um, and that's continuing to to expand and shift. You know, regulatory environment is changing very quickly these days. Um, so, you know, we're doing everything that we can to keep up with that and, again, try to onboard folks where we can, when we can. Um, and, you know, Drizzly was built as a regulatory, a regulatory compliant platform. So our goal is not to disrupt the, the three-tier system um, in the alcohol industry. Our, our, our goal really is to work within those bounds and do so in a legally compliant way. So, um, you know, we're very careful about where, where we operate to ensure that that remains the case. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Um, so I'd love to get a little more into what you guys are specifically seeing with beer, wine, and spirits trends um, for the last couple of weeks, especially last week, you know, because people want the newest data. Um, is, you know, what percentage is beer growing versus wine and spirits? And then, you know, after that, maybe what kind of brands and segments are, are growing the most right now? Yeah, sure. So um, I think when we initially spoke, we were seeing a real acceleration in wine and spirits in particular. Um, that has slowed a bit. So what we've noticed is that the, the mix of share amongst those categories has kind of um, tempered back a little bit to what we'd expect normally. Um, for example, wine typically makes up about 40% of sales on our platform. Um, there were points where that had risen to about 44%. Um, and had taken share away from uh, beer in particular. 
that has kind of evened it up, evened out a little bit. We're back at around 40 to 41%. And we've actually seen beer rise back up. We're sitting at about, um, I think it was 19% this past week. Of be for beer. For beer. <laughs> yeah, so still a smaller percentage, but um, starting to, to gain back some, some of those percentage losses that we were seeing in the early days. Mm -hmm. But they're both up double, uh, yeah, double digits, right, still? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, across the board, we're seeing, we're seeing that growth um, in pretty much every category. So, um, that percentage shift is overall for Drizzly sales. So, you can just imagine, with we're, uh, we're up that much, it's just carrying through all of those categories as well. So, if you're seeing higher... Um, higher percentages in terms of share for beer. That just is reflective of kind of how people are shopping overall on the platform. Gotcha. So what, especially for beer, because I'm selfish and that's my platform, <laughs> what is growing the most? I mean, it's got to be what, seltzer. Um, we've also been hearing uh, a resurgence of some brands that maybe weren't doing so well, but they were legacy tried and true brands and people wanted to go back to them because it represented something that they knew and that they knew exactly what they were going to get. Now's not the time for trial, right? And, you know, it's comforting too. So are you guys seeing that? What, what's growing the most? And maybe yeah. something that's surprisingly growing. Yeah. We've definitely been seeing that from both a categorical and from a brand perspective. Um, people kind of leaning back on their go-tos, those tried and true categories. We're not seeing a ton of experimentation right now. Um, hard seltzer, though, is definitely retaining um, in terms of share and sales on Drizzly. Uh, White Claw continues to be one of the top sellers on the platform. Um, you know, other brands in the liquor category, Tito's, Bullet, uh, from a wine perspective, Kim Crawford, Oyster Bay, we're seeing kind of those same go-tos being the ones that folks are leaning on as well. Um, Bud Light continues to kind of be a top seller. And then from a categorical perspective in beer, we have seen, I think, a higher, um, a higher growth percentage in um, subcategories such as porters, um, New England and hazy IPAs. Okay. Um, so haven't looked too deeply into um, that from a brand perspective, but those were a couple of the, the categories that have popped in this past week in particular. Gotcha. Cool. Um, you know, anything we haven't talked about yet in terms of what your retail partners are telling you about maybe what's going on with their operations or ways that they're specifically asking that, you know, you guys can help or facilitate beyond the norm, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So a number of things are happening. You know, this is definitely unprecedented demand, I think, for, for all of us. And it really varies across the board, but um, it's been, it's been pretty humbling to, um, you know, be in this position during these kinds of times um, and to be able to, to be here for some of these partners um, at a time when a lot of businesses are struggling, you know, we do have some of our partners reaching out and letting us know that, you know, if it was not for Drizzly right now, they would not be in business. Um, so that's something that we, we take very seriously and, you know, are, are working very hard to make sure that we're doing all that we can to support them, whether that's, um, you know, helping out from a customer service perspective, scaling back or adding hours where necessary, making updates to the platform itself based on feedback we're hearing from our partners, um, even communicating with our customers and just asking for more patience during this time. You know, typically we, we pride ourselves um, on our delivery times that our partners are able to meet. We promise under 60 minutes delivery, we are asking for patience from folks right now because those wait times are longer. Um, you know, it's often taking up to two hours. We're, we're doing our best, our retailer partners are doing their best. Um, but I think everyone has been pretty wonderful and amazing and understanding um, of the work that these guys are doing to, to help bring them the service at this point in time. And you guys aren't looking at expanding beyond BevAlk, right? No, we are, we are very focused on the BevAlk industry and that's what we will continue to play. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And, and just as a follow-up, um, you know, to the retail question, the majority of your retail partners are liquor stores, correct? That's correct. Yep. Yep. So majority of partners that we work with are independent retailers. Um, we do work with some chains as well throughout the country, uh, but that is the, the primary folks that we work with. Gotcha. Okay. Let's see. Let me check my magic sheet of questions here mm -hmm. to make sure, <laughs> um, you know, talked about demographics and retailers, any significant regional trends that you guys are seeing? I mean, you know, you mentioned, obviously you guys are in dense urban areas or the most popular, um, anybody 
are you having any outlier trends as far as that goes in terms of where you're the most busy, anything like that? Yeah, um, you know, it's it's something that we're actually watching on a daily and weekly basis. Daily is pretty volatile um, in terms of where we're seeing the most growth. Um, so I think people are definitely reacting very much to what's happening uh, day to day. As an example, um, Seattle, pretty close um, after the, the lockdown was announced, we saw a big surge and then a little bit of a decline, um, still very, very high above what we would have expected to see at that point in time. But we've seen a resurgence again in this past week and they're um, one of the markets where we've seen the most growth. So it's kind of ebbing and flowing across the board. Um, and I think pretty consistently, like from a category and brand perspective, you know, we're not seeing major regional variations. I was looking at some DC data the other day um, they actually are buying less health, hard seltzer than other areas, more beer. Huh. Uh, so it does, there are some slight variations like that, but um, from, a, from across the board, from a categorical perspective, it's pretty consistent. I mean, at least for people in the BevAlk industry who are saying, gosh, I really hope these trends continue, you know, at least in the off-premise or in platforms like yours for the double and triple digit growth. I mean, it's heartening to them, I would think, to hear that Seattle is still growing really well because they've been among those who have been locked down the longest, right? So yeah. folks for further growth down the, down the road, right? Yeah, exactly. We just um, worked on a, a pretty big expansion in California in particular too. So there are a lot more stores on the platform now there. I think we're serving as of last week, another th 3 million people in the area in the state. Oh. So um, yeah, we definitely are continuing to see even in states where those, um, those kinds of restrictions have been mandated that um, we are still seeing big surges in, in consumer demand. Got it, cool. Well, anything else that we haven't covered that you think is pertinent? Um, you know, one other thing that we noticed from, from a, a categorical and consumer purchasing behavior um, trend is just a major spike in liqueurs, cordials. Interesting. Liqueurs. Um, even vermouth actually saw like crazy out, outpaced growth compared to some of the other categories. So I think, you know, we talked a little bit about folks kind of sticking to their standbys, leaning on some legacy brands. Um, I do think like where we are seeing experimentation is with people having more time at home, trying out some more home cocktails. I know lots of bartenders across the country are hosting virtual happy hours and classes. So that is re being reflected on the platform too, which is, which is pretty nice to see. Right, right, very interesting. Well, thank you so much, Liz, I appreciate it. Super yeah. informative as always, and happy, I tell everybody, Mon Thursday, Sunday. Yeah, and, that's uh, <laughs> I know what day it is. <laughs> thank so, you so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Cheers, Bye -bye. Liz. Bye-bye.